Are we there yet? What do you know for sure what happens next? Those of us who have taken long road trips might remember when someone in the car at some point impatiently posed the question, are we there yet? Today, many Christians are asking the same question about the rapture or the return of Donald Trump to the White House. The answer, as usual, lies with God. We are there when he says we are. As I have mentioned in a previous post, the Lord knew about our struggle with patience when he placed patience at the very top on a list describing what love is. Love is patient, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. What do you know for sure easily leads to the question of how do we validate God's word? The best way is to pick out all the prophecies and find out if they actually came to pass. When looking at the fundamental question of Christ's existence, for example, I can highly recommend a book by an award-winning investigative journalist, Lee Strobel. He was a strong atheist when he set out to prove that Christ was nothing more than a character of fiction. After his extensive research culminating in the book, The Case for Christ, which also became a movie, Lee turned from being an atheist to becoming a strong believer and even a pastor. We know for sure that Christ is who he said he is. But we also know that there's an evil devil trying to create a one-world socialist system with his antichrist as leader. Read Job 1, 7. We also know that he is the opposite of love and therefore is rather impatient. Many times in history he tried to take over the world, the last time through Hitler. You can find my post on globalization, what's behind it, here on YouTube. However, God always stopped the devil because it wasn't time yet. There are a few other things that I know for sure because the Lord told me. First, God created America for his gospel end time purpose. Secondly, God stopped the devil's globalist train through Donald Trump, who will be back soon. You can find my post on America and Trump prophecy. Thirdly, there will come major worldwide revivals with an unprecedented soul harvest. I have a post on the soul harvest as well. Number four, there will come a sudden worldwide disappearance of true followers of Jesus Christ through the rapture. Please note that Jesus isn't coming to earth, his second coming. Instead, we are leaving earth to meet him in the clouds as we read in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. I also have made a video on the topic of the rapture. So where do we stand today? There are too many wrinkles in the church. Through the compromise of God's values and standards and while loving the things the world has to offer, the church to a large degree has become God's enemy. In James 4 verse 4 we read the following. You unfaithful people, don't you know that friendship with the world means hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the world's friend becomes God's enemy. By trying to be seeker friendly and serving the world with motivational speeches, skinny jeans and professional band performances with light shows and smoke machines, we have driven the Holy Spirit out of the institutionalized business-like people-centered church. There's a reason why there's no power in the church, because God never intended for his body to end up as a social gathering. And while babies are sacrificed to the gods of choice and self, Baal and Molech, instead of loudly protesting and pleading with God against such evil, the church was busy with quantity and numbers, modern relevance in speeches and how to accommodate people in an environment created for comfort. Free coffee and donuts and cool video clips are sure to enhance the experience. However, the good news is that Jesus is coming back for a precious bride without spot or wrinkle. That is his promise and it obviously must happen before the rapture, before he comes back for his bride. 
And how do you get rid of wrinkles? With a hot iron. Like many times in the past, the Lord is using that which the enemy meant for evil to bring about something good. The Lord has shut down much of the organized church using the coronavirus as a tool to stop her from continuing on her downward path. Many of the Christians who used to go to church on Sundays have found other social outlets. Those Christians who are the church are now finding creative ways to connect with Jesus through home Bible studies and extended times in prayer. Because we are in the last days of the end time, everything has now become global. As Satan is trying to destroy America while uniting the world through the COVID pandemic, God is exposing much of the evil in the world while cleaning up his church, separating the lukewarm from the faithful, true followers of Christ. You can find my post on Detox Before the Soul Harvest. As soon as the Lord decides that his church is clean enough and ready, he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out his spirit, which is his promise in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Let us be patient in prayer and fasting and with great faith and joy of what is to come soon. Jesus Christ will be glorified. Let us seek his kingdom first. Amen.